The Royal Marines are always looking to adapt and innovate to the challenges that they'll meet uh, in the future. Uh, but we're humble enough to, uh, to understand that we don't have all the answers for this ourselves, which is why it's really important to work with uh, partners in industry uh, to, to, to look at these problems and think together of, uh, of novel solutions to meet these challenges. Uh, our thinking is very much shaped by our experiences. Uh, so we've got some engineering graduates here at the Commando Training Centre who are unencumbered by, uh, by, by experiences of the kit and equipment we have now and what we've, what we've done in the past. So they've got a completely new way of thinking uh, about how we overcome the challenges of the future. So we've set them to challenges about a commando raid uh, in about 50 years' time, and they've, they've looked at the problems inherent in that and then used their, uh, used their imagination to come up with novel concepts of how we'd overcome these challenges. And the output, the product of this, uh, will, will shape, hopefully, our, our conceptual thinking into the future. I'm here today at the Commando Training Centre to learn about what the commandos go through, what their role involves, what their current problems are, and we're going to use this to provide context to bring out innovative ideas that will deliver future capability to the Marines. It's been a great opportunity to see what the commandos do, what they go through and how much training and work they have to put in to be at the level that they are at. It also helps me to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing and what I need to give them to help them succeed in their missions. This was effectively a futuristic look at what the Royal Marines could be equipped with in the future. We've called the scenario the story of a raid and it's looking at what really is fifth generation Royal Marines or indeed beyond. The story of a raid is the final scenario in a number that we've done since 2015 to coincide with the DSEI exhibition. This is the final one where we're looking at how to bring this incredibly advanced technology to life uh, for the Royal Marines. One of the designs I've been looking at is how we can identify targets. Um, so one of the ones I would really like to do is to have some sort of contact lens where within this contact lens you can have thermal Im imaging, you can have contact identification and we can run some few AI hopefully through it so that you can track how troops move and you can identify possible hostiles based on their movements because we know that the, the enemy is going to act a different way to a hostage and civilians. Um, we can use that to help Marines know beforehand who they need to target, who they need to save, help um, in hostage situations, help with even just normal rescue situations in disaster areas. There are three purposes uh, to this. It's to position the Royal Marines as the, the thinking man or the thinking woman's future fighter. And it's there to create a bit of a buzz. It's there cr to create a wow factor. You know, if 10% of this becomes real, we will have succeeded, we will have done our job. But it's to take military thinking out of its comfort zone. It's to go beyond the engineering capabilities of today. It's what we call visioneering. And that's where it's so good to get these young, enthusiastic engineers from both the public sector and the private sector, mix them together with the Royal Marines, give them a bit of the ethos of the Royal Marines here at CTC uh, Limpston, and, and see what comes out of it. And so, you know, we want to position the Royal Marines as the best of the best, but not just now, but capable of thinking, you know, well into the future.